Here's Wilson, and on the right side, but he scores! Rebound loose, wild scramble in front, score! Ovechkin with a buzzer beater! It counts! And a hat trick tonight, number 21, Evan Hello, welcome once again to the Power Play Point Podcast. I am your host, the Blue Liner on Point. And yes, hockey is back. Well, maybe not in full swing, but uh, you know what? It counts just like anything else. And uh, so, yeah, uh, training camp has begun. So we're uh, we're starting this 2019-2020 off uh, the right way, but more on that later. Um now so uh not to stall anymore but uh giving it her all and she'll explain why uh, in a minute is our uh beautiful wonderful ever popular co-host you know her very well especially if you're a student in fairfax county she (laughs) is the mermaid anna knox yes greetings and uh apologizing for the head cold i believe it was this time last year that um, the joke was made about Kim Carnes and Betty Davis eyes that I was trying to be like her. And you know what? We're just going to do a repeat because apparently this head cold decides to come the first month of school. So I'm here. I'm probably sound worse than I feel, but, um, but I'm here and I'm excited and I'm excited to hear about your experience last night at the game versus the Blackhawks. Yes, yes, uh, we'll be talking about that. That'll be the main course here in our uh, serving up of uh, the first bit of Caps hockey in this new uh, season. Um, And, uh, yeah, speaking of which, uh, I just want to get – well, I I don't want to make it sound like I'm getting it out of the way because some of it is is stuff that's a bit overdue, and uh, we really have to thank our loyal listeners and followers for it. But um, I, I mentioned it in the show's notes um, last week, but I just want to publicly mention it now. Uh, according to Podbean, the Power Play Point podcast has crossed the 1,000 follower mark. Oh, so, hooray. Yes, and it, we're actually at 1,083 at, oh, at look the at last us. count. That's so, amazing. I, I, I just want to take this time to publicly, on behalf of Anna and myself, publicly thank uh, all of our Podbean followers um, who, as I understand, uh, not just uh, USA and Canada, but around the globe, um, and just say I'm, I'm humbled and I'm touched. Uh, we both are that uh, you've decided to uh, make this one of the podcasts that you keep tabs on and, and listen to and, and uh, you know, take part in with your comments and everything. So, uh, that's that's just great. I, I'm I'm I wish I had uh, you know something of a speech prepared or some better things to say, but I'm just I'm just thrilled, humbled, and proud. And I, I just honestly I never thought it would get this far, but I, I'm glad that it has. And and we're just going to keep on plowing through. So uh, on behalf of Anna, thanks to all of you thousand plus out there that are uh, marking us as uh, a Podbean podcast. And, of course, thanks to Podbean as well. Can't help but give a nod to them. Right. Uh, their people have been absolutely great uh, yeah. the whole time. So uh, thanks to them as well. So uh, just wanted to put that out there. Didn't want to, uh, you know, didn't, wanted to make sure everybody was acknowledged and, and thanked properly for that. So just, just want to put that out there. Well, uh, and, all, and I just, I just want to say that at the end of last year, I had to talk you off the ledge a little bit about not wanting to do the show anymore. And I remember we were like frustrated at the end of the season and we were kind of fed up with stuff and all this stuff. And I was like, you know what? We just got to sit back and take the summer to focus on other things. And, and it was all good. And I am so glad uh, that we came back. And so, yeah, thanks listeners. Thanks everybody. Um, 
And let's just hope that this is cap season is just going to be as good as it was in 2018. Yep, absolutely. And as I mentioned before, this is this is a third year, third go around with the all new uh, format uh, to which you to which you um, are enjoying now, and which you're hearing the uh, the lovely voice of my co-host. Um, thanks to that, and uh, yeah, just just to say again how how absolutely blown away I am that that we've reached that mark, and uh, I just. You're, you're right. It's, it's some time off did me some good. I had a few things I wanted to do with the podcast uh, over the summer, but yeah, it, it was good to take a step back um, and, and kind of just refresh. So uh, yeah, that was, that was a very good call. Uh, something else here. Uh, speaking of the show, I uh, kind of want to, I don't know, I don't know about change things or jazz things up, but uh, I, uh, I come from uh, something of a radio background. My dad was uh, a, a DJ when he was uh, in his college days, in his much younger days. Um, and I picked up a, a few things from him and from some other uh, of my favorite radio hosts. Okay, where are you going with this? Where I'm going with this is um, there is going to be uh, for uh, hopefully, well, I'd like to think a lot, if not all Caps fans, are, are pretty intelligent. So uh, there's an old radio game out there that we're going to try out that I'm going to throw in here. Uh, sometimes uh, the DJ will throw in a, a, a light motif and play three songs or something like that that have the same uh, a common thread to them or something like that. So uh, throughout the epi- next few episodes, there's going to be something like that. I'm going to throw out some phrases uh that that are going to reflect that and uh, we'll see if you can guess along and if i can i don't know maybe drum up some donations or or something like that might even be able to put together like a prize or something for whoever gets it right Uh, okay well i have i have i have a good example if this is what you're thinking of doing just for anyone that knows what is the significance of the numbers 6 13 and 43 for me yeah, yeah, that that's a good example, or something <laughs> like that. Some something personal. I no, to... I know you're gonna. I know you're gonna get like Uber, um, hockey stats and stuff. And it, absolutely have at it because I know that we have um, so many knowledgeable listeners. And that's good. That's great. Mine was well, just being lighthearted. You, yeah. So so here's the thing that this first one is actually not going to be hockey related at all. I, I thought I'd throw oh. a soft soft okay. one out there. But okay. uh, yeah, you'll 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 hear a few of them come out, and I'm going to toss in some kind of uh, kind of uh, side ones to to get you off the beaten path if I can. But you'll a lot of you will probably recognize them when when they come by. But uh, too we'll all be... spontaneous and adventuresome this season. Yeah, well, you know, just trying different things, trying to keep the show fresh, uh, okay. trying to get new people involved. So you never know. But uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, so let's let's uh, get to uh, some stuff that is before we get into the game. Last night's game. Some stuff that's happened um, in between time. Uh, the big story, of course, uh, uh, Genis Kuznetsov. It was announced over the weekend that he would be suspended for the first three games of the 2019-2020 season due to his well recent development self shall we say i think we all know what's you know what's happened here and i think the consensus is that it may it's probably not so much the actual uh drug use versus how he handled it when the first stories came out so um i don't know i mean i think people are um you know, disappointed in his actions. And I will say that three game suspension, it could have been so much worse. Oh yeah. So, you know, a little humble pie moment for Kuzi, you know, when you know, there's going to be that um, first game, you know, with all the fans and all the hype and, you know, you're not playing, (laughs) you know, that, that sucks. And I, and I do think that he, did he handle it well? No, but no one is gonna. Uh, and I said this before. No one's gonna, you know, flat out be like, "Yep, I was doing cocaine." Like, you know, you're gonna first you want to deny it, and then you know, eventually evidence is gonna come out. Maybe, maybe not. 
to to those and there are some out there and i know for a fact there are some out there because i've encountered a few type of people that uh are basically uh not forgiving uh some and you know who you are some of you out there i doubt they're listening to this show but <laughs> some out there who have uh, gone to the point of basically calling him a criminal uh, yeah. okay well yeah, well, that's maybe, appropriate. I mean, again, yeah. people in glass houses. Let's face it. Nobody is 100% lily white, virgin pure, clear as crystal. Nobody. So you people out there who are doing that to your fellow Caps fans, you know, I'm exactly. sorry, but but F you. You know, we, we don't need you. We don't need no, you. Don't. Go cheer for some other garbage team. Right. We don't need you. Go jump on a Ryan Reeves bandwagon. Exactly. Exactly. You can you can all go to that go down that hell of a rabbit hole for all I care. Um, but yeah, that's uh but that's what's going on with that. Yeah, those are the major news stories. And of course, uh training camp uh started uh late last week. Now, um uh, question for you before we get to the game from last night, Anna. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I know, I know you're under the weather, so it it may not be a possibility. But uh, off air, we discussed uh, your uh, possibly getting out to MedStar, maybe for one or two uh, training sessions. Right. <clears throat> um, is that still? Do you think that's still on the table, or or is that that kind of a? Um, at this point, I don't, I'd actually I have to look at the schedule and see what time they're on the ice and see if I can get out there. I want to, I really, really do. Um, but having had to leave early um, school today and off tomorrow because I have a little fever and not allowed to be back at school for 24 hours. Um, I don't know, I'll have to look at the schedule, but I want to, because especially after the, some of the guys I saw last night, I was, be kind of awesome to see them, you know, um, to see how the chemistry goes, you know, in practice and things like that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And but so yeah, I was I, I was kind of hoping you'd be uh, our, our eye in the sky, as it were. But uh, yeah, I, as it turns out, uh, uh, I, I get the first up close scar, uh, scouting report, which we we'll get right. to here in a second when we go over last night's game. So it's the first of the preseason. So look, I, I get I get that in the long run of things, even as far as evaluation of the, the newer guys or the uh, the young jerks, uh, as my friend Rick used to call them, because uh, it's like, hey, who are all these people? Well, if you pay attention, you know all these people. But uh, it was still great to see hockey. It was still great to see an actual hockey game and actual hockey situations and actual hockey players and actual hockey, you know, motifs or whatever. I'm running out of actual objectives, adjectives here, but you get the point. We were all starved for it. We all wanted to see it. And yeah, it was a little, it was a little rough at times, but I, I, I was, it was pretty good, pretty good preview. If, if you want to maintain your optimism, I think there were a lot of good things, a lot of bad things too, a lot of rust, obviously, but a lot of a lot of good things I saw last night. Uh, just just a kind of a quick overall uh, evaluation. I think Alexei Protus had uh, a pretty damn good game, if I do say so, um, and a couple other guys uh, come to mind. Well, actually, his whole line looked pretty good. Uh, I have some notes that I I, I, I want to go over here. Uh, well, okay. So starting with the warmest, I noticed that Brendan Leipzig was the last off. So that that that's a good sign. Jonas Siegenthaler looked a little shaky in the first period. I thought. I think uh, uh, Nick uh, uh, Jensen had uh, Jensen had a pretty good game. I, I thought overall. Uh, Copley was steady or early on. Now, it looked a little shaky in the first period, but it's kind of to be expected. And before I go on, uh, I would not have even – I just want to take this time. I would not have even had the chance to even go to the game uh, were it not for uh, Lisa Desiree. So I just want to publicly thank her right now for uh, the use of, uh, of her tickets. 
her, her and her husband, they couldn't make it. So they, they thought of their fellow Caps fans. So I, I just want to thank them here and now. And that, that was, that was just great uh, of, of them to do that. So that's, uh, I really want to thank them before, you know, I get too far. I don't, don't want to forget. So. No. And I, and um, I want to also say that Lisa has been awesome enough on Twitter to um, tell Caps fans, Caps family, when she has had um, extra boxes of OVOs, which is so sweet because I have yet to find anything out here, but I haven't hit her up for one. I'm okay. Um, But somebody said, I can't find it. And she said, you listen, you pay for the shipping and the postage and I'll send you, you know, a box from, you know, looking out for Caps family. So I, Lisa, you, you rock always. Yeah. It's good that you, you mentioned uh, OVOs actually, because (laughs) I actually was looking for those at our local giant, and yeah, they don't have them up here at all. Another side note, happy birthday to our captain. Yes. Don't want to forget that as well. Oh my gosh, that video of his son. Him and his youngin, yeah. Uh, with the balloon, a practice. To, see, that makes me just be like, I don't want to teach for the next week and a half because I want to go and watch all these practices, those little cherishable moments that, oh, when you see the players with their kids, love it. Yep, little little Sergey watching on, and that was yeah, that was uh, beyond cute. And don't forget Holtby, turned thirty yesterday. Yep, absolutely. Shut it down but, right now. Yeah, what, I just just saying. No, we're not talking about it. I know, not right now, anyway. Uh, but anyway, getting back to uh, last night's game, uh, I thought uh, Segan Faller looked a little shaky. Uh, Juice looked a tad bit shaky in the opening period. Yeah, uh, like a deer in the headlights. A little bit, a little yeah. bit, especially especially uh, you know clearing pucks out of his own zone. Yeah, and wasn't wasn't liking that effort. Uh, uh, Luke Johansson uh, on, uh, also on the decor. He looked decent. Um, uh, he's he's uh, you know. I like his skating. I like his coverage. Uh, not much else to see here, unfortunately, uh, as far as puck movement and his overall game. But I think uh, I think he'll be he'll be uh, uh, something of a, a you know, I don't know if a stud par- prospect, but uh, someone someone who'll be reliable in the coming years. I don't know if he's going to make the team this year. He probably won't. Probably spend another year in Hershey, but uh, that'll that'll be good for him. Um, so they got. Uh, they got a power play uh, in the first period. A couple chances that uh, uh, Travis Boyd had. I noticed he took way too long on his releases. Um, that better not be a habit going forward. Uh, of course, uh, as we all know, he correct that later on in the game. Uh, Juice had a good shot, though, that hit the point. Uh, from yeah. the point, that hit the post. Boyd, had, I thought, had overall, uh, once he got the jitters done with, uh, he had a, he also had a good game. Um, got another note here. Uh, number 88 is Bobby Nardella. Uh, I, I wasn't too impressed with him. I was a little weak on the boards. He was, he was getting beat to pucks too much. So, uh, I don't, he didn't really end up getting a whole lot of playing time. I don't expect, uh, him to stick. So I don't believe, I don't believe there was any scoring in the first. Uh, so moving on oh, to the second, yeah, uh, not from us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we get what we yeah, yeah, true. We fell behind one nothing. Um, uh, second period, first note I have Nick Dow. What a hit! What a hit on the uh, in the back corner there. Yeah. Uh, uh, way to way to reintroduce yourself. Of course, of course, he's uh, fighting for a spot on the fourth line. Fourth line. Uh, and the Swiss player Damian Riot. Uh, he's the one that got the opening goal for the Caps. Right. Uh, good, good net front presence. I heard later on he's actually going to go back to his Swiss League team. So it oh. kind of makes me wonder why. Why is he even here? Yeah, and it was it was Eric Hayes on Twitter who was like uh, who made a good point. Of, what the hell? Why is he taking up a roster spot? Why is he taking up a a spot that uh, could go to somebody else that needs a chance to shine? So eh, good, that's odd. Good, good point. But yeah, I, you know, I, I like the the second and third. You know option he gave himself in front of the net and he, he put it away for the opening goal uh connor mcmichael and tyler lewington with the assists on that one um okay, can i just say i like their chemistry mcmichael and lewington yeah i don't know i, I kind of 
Well, I just like, I like them. I think that watching yesterday, and of course, you know, you're always going to have the jitters and you're always going to have that. And I don't know. I'm never a big preseason fan of any sport anyways, because I'm always afraid of injuries, you know, and they, and then like they put Tommy in last night. I was like, oh my God, please don't. But we'll talk about uh, my humble pie moment by not wanting him to play, but I'm so glad that he did. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. Like I'm, I'm liking, I think of the times I've seen um, McMichael uh, interviewed, I don't know. I don't know why I shouldn't put so much on the interview. It really doesn't, you know, shouldn't matter all that much, but I like what he has to say. I like that he is a humbled player. I like that he kicks ass. I, I was impressed with him. He was one that really stood out yesterday and I've, and Lewington, I mean, come on, <coughs> you don't have a, <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, come oh. out in your first NHL game and have your, Gordie Howe hat trick and kick ass. So you kind of have to have uber respect for that kid and hope that he can, you know, continue on and continue doing well. So I, I do like Lewington. I, I, I thought Lewington had a solid game. Uh, nothing, nothing that stood out too great, but uh, no. you know, pretty solid game overall. Um, There's potential. But the, yeah. But as far as the forwards go, I think, I think that, uh, uh uh, McMichael, uh, Leipzig, and uh, another young gentleman uh, I'll be mentioning here because he uh, made his way on the score sheet a few times, uh, Protus. Alexi Protus, uh, are, are probably the future of, yeah. of the, yeah. the forward lines for the, the, the caps, for the, the, the short <laughs> and, and long term. Right. And Protus, 18. Yeah. 18. Hard to believe. I wonder. I don't know. I I haven't quite determined who's uh you know who's going to be in my little circle of love this year other than Bron and Wilson and Kempney but you know I have to we talked about it before I've got to open up and see um but goddamn 18 years old like this is his life like he's got you know this is it he's gonna go and play he's got uh fresh legs to say the least and I'm really, really, really looking forward to seeing him more. Yeah, definitely. And that I, I think he's going to get, if he keeps it up, I think he's going to get uh, much, much more of an opportunity uh, as time goes by. If not, if not with the big club, then certainly with uh, the Bears. Exactly. Uh, so there's that. Um, okay. So, uh, okay. So on, onward with the second period, uh, right away, for some reason, when the second not long after the second period started, everything looked like it started to gel for the Caps, especially their forward play, uh, Damian Riott with the, with the tying goal. Uh, and not much longer after that, the Caps got their second power play opportunity. Uh, Travis Boyd uh, got yeah. another chance, and he put it away. And uh, Protus and Juice had the assists on that. Uh, pretty good uh, point shot uh, from Boyd or, or wing shot. I think, uh, might've been around, uh, if I remember it, might have, was right around kind of, uh, Ovi's old office or not old office, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, somewhere around there that he, uh, put it away. And not long after that, in the same period, uh, Protus struck again, this time scoring himself. I thought his line, uh, this, this is, this is, I hope I see more of this, uh, but this was a stroke of genius by the, co uh, coaching staff. Uh, they put him on the line with Beck Malenstein and Joe Snively, the local kid. Right. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, Joe is from Herndon, if I remember right. right. Um, and and grew up uh, uh, being a little cap, uh, the 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 Mike team. Um, so yeah, so he's homegrown talent, 100. percent And yeah, I, I thought he and Malenstein and uh, Protus, they were easily the best line all night for the Caps. I thought they I had agree. Great great chemistry they they found each other well uh i love i love snidely uh and his is his four checking game he's you know when he got the chance he was all over the ice um uh malenstein seems to be more like the the setup man and uh -huh. and protus has the skill in front of the net so i i think the coaching staff has has a winning combination there i'd like to see more of them I agree. And I think that that's going to be, like you said, could be your future line. 
for seasons to come and young, fresh legs. They're quick, they're smart and open-minded into the sense that they are only going to learn from, you know, your Ovechkins, your Wilsons, your Oshies, your Koozies, your Backstroms, you know, it's, it's, it's a great balance. So you have the vet knowledge and, and six skills, and then you have, you know, these young ones coming in who are eager to learn, but are damn good at what they're, where they're at right now. Yeah, abs- absolutely. Uh, completely agree. Um, so that, uh, that ended the, I think there was, um, uh, uh, the, the Hawks came back and tied it before the end of the third. Right. Uh, one of them being a fluky ass goal, <laughs> which I, I love Phoenix Copley, but I, I don't know. And I don't know what it is about him though. Every other game, he seems to fall victim to a really crazy ass goal that just okay. sneaks, sneaks in out of nowhere. Well, I think and, it, it was, what, I don't know if it was this goal or it was the first one. But you have a, a you know a, a defenseman in front of you, and even like Joe B was like, "There's no way he could have seen around him, around the, your your D line, um, to see where where the the Hawks player was going to shoot." I mean, it was like, "Where the hell did that come from?" Yeah, he has a lot of those, and I don't know, you know, I don't put it on his skill. I've always been a Copley fan. But yeah, there was a couple, he does get those crazy kind of where the hell that come from <laughs> um, moments. So I agree with you on that one, which is, but was that the, or maybe that was the one that tied it up to make a three, three. That was, I think that was the one that tied it up. Okay. Uh, and I, I swear to God, even, even with, I, I had my binoculars with me and it was, it was the far end at the time. Oh, you were that and, guy. And, what do you mean I'm that guy? No one I'm else. Doing a, doing a scouting report for crying out loud i have to see everything anyway uh even even uh with from my vantage point with my binoculars i could not see how the hell this puck came in it had to have been the exact size and dimension of the puck to go through (laughs) that that it went through because because to me copley had his end covered so i i don't know a fluky ass goal so they go into the uh the third tide and of course, we're all thinking, "Oh no, um, overtime," which is which is where it went uh, eventually. But before we get into uh, what happened to the third uh, and OT, uh, need to uh, take another uh, bit of break here. Gonna, gonna take this time to help out a, a fellow list, a fellow Caps fan, and a loyal listener, and um, uh, a good friend of mine actually. And uh, I posted on the Facebook page that bit of bad luck. Uh, befell him and his name is Ronnie Schrantz. We've had him on the show before um, and he, he talked about being at the uh, the outdoor game in Annapolis. Um, well, uh, at the time he was, he found himself uh, unemployed through no fault of his own. His boss just decided to not need him anymore, uh, which fortunately only lasted for the day. Well, I decided to go ahead and give him a free plug anyway, because F you to the powers that be that decided to even make him unemployed for a day and he could de- he could do well and deserves some side work. So here's here's his specialty. He's basically he can do uh, just mainly any odd or small jobs uh, as far as home improvement. His specialty uh, happens to be power washing and uh, installing patio pavers, but he can do so much more as I found out. Uh, plumbing installation, a dishwasher installation, garbage disposals, uh, you need a new toilet installed, he can certainly do that. Now, if, if it seems small, but it's, it's, too, it, it's too big a, a job to, for you to do by yourself, he can definitely do it. Um, at, as, as has been said before, uh, no, no job is too small, no fee is too big. Uh, no, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. He's, he's not going to overcharge you. Seriously, though, I, I've known him for 25 years in my life. And he is probably the most trustworthy person I know. Um, so there is no way he will walk away from the job without knowing that it's done right. And I've seen some of his work. It's absolutely gorgeous. And, and he, he can do the job. And I, I would, uh, uh, if, if I actually own my own home, I would certainly 
uh, trust him with uh, a lot of the stuff that would need to be done. Um, and on top of all that, you know, and this this isn't an excuse or, or anything, but I just I do want to mention this. He is a veteran of our United States military. He did serve in the United States Navy for, for several years. So I, I think that alone, uh, his, his sacrifice, I think merits uh, some deserving of, you know, whoever might need his services out there, throwing a, a job or two his way, because you know he's dedicated, you know, based on that, that he's dedicated. So if, if, if anyone's interested, get in touch with me or Ron through the uh, the Facebook page, and we'll certainly, uh, you know, you can discuss terms with him. Um, he, he's, uh, you want his contact information, again, I'll, I'll get you in touch with him, but uh, he's a good man, and he does damn good work. So uh, I, I would certainly trust him, and I think you should too, if you have a, a, any sort of job that needs doing around the house. So I just wanted to put that out there, and, uh, and, and let him know that one, that one's definitely from the heart. Cause um, I, you know, he's, he's, he's one of the, he's definitely one of the good guys in this world. And as we know, there's, there's just not enough of them. Agreed. Um, okay. And uh, some, something else I, I forgot to mention um, before we get to the third and overtime. Uh, I finally got a chance in between the first and second periods to meet loyal listener and uh, the admin of the Washington Capitals uh, Facebook fan page, Sonia Kendall, and her husband, Greg, uh, in between intermission. Um, the plan was to get a picture uh, and maybe uh, a quick interview, uh, quick maybe two minutes that I would tack onto the show, but uh, unfortunately, they didn't have time. I was trying to hook up with them uh, by warm-ups and meet up with them, but... Uh, uh, we kind of got went sideways on that because uh, they they were delayed. So uh, probably another time. But I, I finally had the pleasure of uh, meeting her in person. Uh, uh, Greg was uh, rocking his red jersey, and uh, Sonia had on the uh, the Caps outdoor uh, uh, navy jersey. So that that was cool to see them in. But just just want to put them out there and give them uh, give them a shout out as well. Uh, okay, so on to the third period. The third period was a lot of, uh, honestly, nothing to see here. Uh, not really awful, but uh, the one thing, the one note I did have, I did uh, make was that, and, and this, I mean, this is a guy, this is a guy that's fighting for his job, even though they just recently signed him, but I, I'm sorry, I was not impressed with Chandler Stevenson at all this game. He did not, he did not use his speed. His, his best advantage, he did not handle the puck very well. He didn't move the puck very well. Didn't position himself very well. I, I, I It could have been worse, but I, I just don't think he had all that good a game. No, and I feel like he just kind of half-assed it, to be honest. Like, he just kind of looked at it like, eh, it's a pregame uh, or a preseason game. Uh, you know what? Regardless, when, when the team is on the cusp of whether or not they're going to you know, sign you or not, you kind of need to step it up. Re regardless if it's practice, you know, preseason game, whatever. Um, again, he is one, I think, this year. I'm hoping it's only him, and I don't have to put Orloff in this category, too, that I need to see so much more. I mean, they're totally two, just two separate players, and, and I get that, but those are like those two names that – I'm like, oh, I get so frustrated with but Stevenson, come on. You know, you you have the skill, obviously, but it's I need to see more. So preseason game, I'm gonna give him a, a pass, but I definitely was not impressed last night. No, I uh, yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Need to see a lot more from him. And, and he's gonna wind up on the fourth line again, assuming he does stay. So right. but but yeah, I mean we this is probably his best chance to, sh to shine. He's he's gonna he's right now he's on the ice with, you know, sixty seven percent guys who will be sent back to either junior or the AHL. So, right. now is your time. Step it up. Yeah, exactly. And and he's right now he's just not doing it. And uh, I, I, if I were GMBM, I would say, hey, uh, be talking to uh, some. Some other teams say, hey, um, um, I got this guy here. He's not making much. Um, want to take him off my hands? Right. Maybe some draft picks? I'd be <laughs> making some calls if I were him. Because right now, ugh, 
Yeah. Well, I think it, you know, and, and especially when you're in that position, it's like, you may think you have nothing to prove, but when you go into it with that attitude, you know, exactly. they're going to pick up exactly. on that. You know what? You can be replaced. All of yes. you can be replaced. So, you know, don't, I don't see him as cocky. I truly don't. I don't think he's arrogant, but I, I definitely think that he took yesterday as sort of like, yawn, it's preseason. But you know what? Who You should be out there respecting the fact that the fans are there, that this should be considered a game that people are watching and that, and that, you know what, this is when we're going to, as you know, you and I, and, and all other fans who are looking maybe more closely at certain things, going to look at that chemistry, you know, and it's like, if you're that black sheep that, you know, can't mesh with the other players, it's like, well, shit, you've been with the Capitals and we're not impressed with you. That speaks volume. So Let's hope things change uh, for the best. But yeah, he's he was kind of my he was my meh emoji. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would yeah I, I would say as as far as as far as all of the the entire on ice roster goes, I was the least impressed with with him. True, uh, which is not good because the guy had a, a regular you know place on the team. Would so, you like to know who I was the most impressed with? I kind of know who you were impressed with. <laughs> who you were impressed with? Uh, we'll get to him in a second here. In fact, uh, let's 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 uh, let's take care of that right now. So, as we all know, the game went into overtime, um, and uh, so I'm so uh, glad you stayed. Why? Why? Why wouldn't well, I? Because there are so many people that leave, like for, that are just like overtime? I don't want to deal with parking. I don't want to deal with this, and I'm like, oh, oh I well, took I took the metro in. Yeah, well, still, people don't deal with crowds or whatever. I mean, I've been to enough games to be like, why is everyone leaving? Um, but I'm so well, then, glad. You know I've... what? You know what? You're, you're, I, I don't want to cast aspersions again, but if you do that, I'm sorry. If you leave before the end result is determined. <laughs> right. And you're not a real hockey fan. I agree. I'm sorry. I, I, I never understood when people, people did that. And I, I, hmm, I, Bad childhood memories here, but uh, some some Caps games where it it, it went really bad, uh, like minutes into the third period, uh, uh, yeah, when we'd go, uh, my my dad would drag us out because he couldn't stand to watch it anymore. Of course, he'd turn on the radio and and listen to it <laughs> right. on the drive home, but no, he couldn't he couldn't stand and be like, ah, "We're here. Why don't we sit through this?" But yeah, no, so that. No, I, I, I'm going to, if I'm there, I mean, yeah, I didn't pay for the tickets, obviously, but I'm there. I'm going to enjoy the whole flipping thing. I even stayed for the three stars. Oh, God. So, I mean, that, that, that's what, I mean, that, that's what I am. I'm, look, I'm not, not one to toot my own horn, but that, that I feel like, you know, I, you I went there. You tooted your own horn there for a minute, and then you didn't stay for that part? I did, I did stay for that part. Oh, I thought you said you didn't. I did. No, for the three stars? Yeah. Yeah. I did. Oh, sorry. I thought you said I didn't stay for the. Th okay, never mind. All right. Anyways, let's just talk about. Well, this speaking, OT I just want to. I just want to mention one thing. It, it, it speaking of of, of tooting. Um. So so you, it, isn't it the the fact that you couldn't go because uh you you had something about, you had some tutoring to do on uh, your on your own. You did. I did. I did. And and I won't get into it. Um. But yes, I have a student currently uh who has cancer and oh my. yes well, and you, you, just, worked, you just killed the joke i, was I totally do. did because i told you the other day i if i told you uh this long drawn out story it's very sad it's very close to my heart so we'll probably have to edit this out of the show <sighs> okay well I, I was gonna make a joke about my attempt at tutoring but uh right I, yeah, like I said, you just killed that. So I did. I moving did. on, moving on. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, this game goes into overtime, and I, I one thing about OT, um, you hate it. Well, no, no, no hate I, the shootout. I, I, hate, I hate the shootout. So, uh, pretty, pretty excited. No, I love the overtime. I love the current format, three on three, and of course, uh, they had the best three guys out there most of the time. Uh, Mr. Tom Wilson, of course, uh, Christian Juice. And uh, pretty sure Travis Boyd had plenty of ice time out there. Uh, lots of exciting chances, lots of end-to-end. -end. Uh, Phoenix Copley came up with one hell of a save. 
yeah. uh, about a minute and a half in uh, that really saved their bacon. So uh, glad to see that. And then with about, uh, I want to say, two minutes and 25 seconds to go. Two uh, minutes, 35 seconds. Well, that, that was the time of the goal. Oh, uh, okay. The time, the time of right. the play uh, was, was about 10 seconds before that. It might have been, been less. But uh, yeah, a certain a certain um, uh, Caps player wearing uh, number forty three on the back and an A on the front. Um, okay, know can we, that. Let, can we just pause for a moment? Sure. That A, like I had a, a like a really proud mom moment there, like single tier, golf clap, ovary explosion, whatever you want to call it, for Tommy. Oh my God. Oh my God. And, and, and it could just be preseason and that's totally fine. But you know what? How far has he come to earn that in the last couple of years? When he had all that ridiculous suspensions and the issues with Ryan Reeves, blah, blah, blah. blah. And people are like, trade him. You know, he's a hothead. He's a goon. He, well, whatever. You know what? There are a bunch of us that have stood by Tommy's side. And what he did last night just proved that he has, he has matured as a player and he deserves that. A. I really hope he gets it. I don't think he will. I don't know. I don't know how that whole thing works, but you know what? He was out there. He played well. And when he scored, which was sick, it was fast. It was skilled. It was, it was awesome. He had that smile on his face. He embraced, um, you know, the, pl the players that, you know, it's it's not, it's different when you, you know, preseason versus, you know, or hugging Backstrom or, uh, you know, Oshie or whomever he's on the line with. But, um, oh, I was super, super proud of him. So, yeah. You're, you're, you're gushing, I can tell. And, I uh, am. Oh my not, god! And it's I not all so the bad. it's not all the bodily fluids due to the head cold or whatever it is you have. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, but, but in all yeah. but in all seriousness, I thought uh, it was a family show, Gail. Thanks. Well, sometimes, uh, <laughs> but no. In, in all seriousness, yes, you you are you are spot on as far as that goes because yes, uh, he is being counted on uh, to mentor a lot of these younger players and and some of them like you pointed out are 18 years old right well and i think i, I have think, a stepson who will soon be 18 years old <laughs> right well when they're i think i don't know if it was rob carlin or somebody was kind of making a joke a little bit about interviewing tommy afterwards saying like hey how does it feel to be like the veteran on the team uh tonight you know, and taking these young kids like under your wing. And he's like, dude, I'm still like, I'm 24. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm still young, you know, come on now. And that's true. But it's like, but I feel like, you know, who he was when he came out and, and everyone was like, oh, he's going to, you know, he's going to drop the gloves every moment he can get. And he's raking up all these penalty box minutes and always, oh, you know, this and that. But you know what? God, he really has just, you know, he's aside from me, just like absolutely adoring him as you know Tom Wilson, um, has insanely impressed me last year, the year before. You know, so I, I'm just proud. I'm just super excited. But I'm not going to say he's a bad player at 24. I'm not quite. I'm not quite there yet. No, he's got he's got plenty in him. And and look, the, the, what we're look we talking about we talked about at, at the beginning. Uh, we're what we're hoping for Kuznetsov in a redemption. This is a living redemption story. True. Is is what we're seeing. This True. this is what you know. Hopefully not. You know the end result of that. Hopefully it continues. But this is what everybody was waiting for, and the payoff of all the patience and the faith. Agreed. So it, it is. It is. A, I you know can't agree more. It is absolutely wonderful to see it paying off. And you know, for those who are still scratching his head, why is he getting this? Why did he get the contract that he got? This is why. So, right. get, and, getting and in, how much respect do you have for him for going out on a preseason game when we were just talking about Stevenson, who was like, meh, you know, kind of playing a little half-ass, not giving it his all for whatever reason. And you know what? Tommy comes out knowing that 
hey, other players are going to want to fight him because he, he's not going to back down from a fight. He's like a complete beast. But you know, when he came out, he he was cautious with certain plays. I also admired the fact that he he passed it several times to quote unquote younger players <laughs> to give them an opportunity to you know get their get comfortable on the ice and and kind of get that momentum going but you know what if you watch what he did at you know what 235 225 that was his skill right there and he he took it like hey I didn't want to go to a shootout and I was just going to end this and hey <laughs> you can't exactly have any right. That was right. to me. That was it. Was absolutely respectful of uh, you know of the sport of his of his teammates, and then just to be like, and I'm a complete badass. I'm going to shut this down because I don't want to go any further. <laughs> exactly right. And so, so uh, the description of the play by my eyes uh, basically is a near end to end rush. So yes, just like you said, uh, did your he, ovaries explode? He, just kidding. <laughs> I won't. I'm not going to dignify okay. that with a response. <laughs> ah. I had to do. I had to do something. I know. I know. Uh, you're you're still gushing. I know. Uh, but yeah, he he took he took the puck from his end uh, behind his own blue line and basically said, "Look, uh, like you said, I'm I'm going to end this." Uh, yep. And and. I swear, I, it was, and I feel the need, the need for speed moment, and you could see, and not only see, but hear him coming, That's and <laughs> toward, <laughs> towards the goal, kind of like, oh, stop. Only it didn't take quite that long. It was more like five to six seconds. Uh, uh, and you said, what? what? Good Lord, you are full Let's of them today. Get on it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Set you up for another one. Yeah, really. Uh, so, uh, yeah, he, he blazes down the, uh, the right wing, uh, heads towards the goal, says, I don't need any help, and uh, gets to about two feet from the crease, says, say hello to my little friend, releases a drive, in the net, game over. And yeah, it was it was an absolute thing of beauty. I had to stand there and watch the uh, the brand spanking new jumbotron they have there. Uh, yes. I had to watch the replay at least two or three times, uh, and, and you know, pick my jaw up off the floor uh, af after seeing it. But yeah, it, it, it was a it was a thing of beauty, and you know. You can say you can say, "Hey, look! It was it was against the it was against a, a, a squad made up of guys that'll probably some of whom will probably be bagging groceries at a Kroger's or something uh, in the next few weeks." So what? It was still beautiful to watch. It was still an awesome play, and yeah, uh, it's it's part of part of leadership. I was just thinking when when you were speaking about him and his qualities a minute ago, I was just thinking something. And I don't want to put any pressure on him, but the one guy that comes to mind uh, in past Caps history that he's kind of rounding into form and looking a lot like that he's reminding me of, Dale Hunter. Oh, hey. And, yeah, and that's so well, – so you, and you, actually, older, you older Caps fans, think about that comparison. Think about it for a few moments, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I think I'm right here. And I saw McMichael's interviewed yesterday. I do believe that Dale Hunter was his coach or some yes. sort. Yes. Yeah. Dale, uh, yes. Uh, he's uh, McMichael was drafted from the, the London Knights junior team. And yes, yep. Dale Hunter is, is his coach. And, and Tommy Wilson did play in the OHL where the London Knights play. And he didn't play on that team. Oh, well, look but... at you like in your little Kevin Bacon, you know, moment. Okay. Kevin Bacon. Well, I, I hate to admit this, but that was that's that actually sounds more like a thing that Pierre Maguire would throw out. But uh, oh, but anyways, I think we're gonna have to start to wrap it up because I'm getting hungry. <laughs> yeah, I, I I believe it. So we're uh, we're getting a, a a tiny bit long here. So um, yeah, it was it was an enjoyable experience. Um, 
and uh, I just want to thank Lisa again uh, for uh, for uh, lending her her uh, season ticket spot. And uh, pardon me, Lisa, if uh, you and your husband are up for that again, um, love love to go again. Uh, yeah. Take uh, oh boy, I'm I'm digging myself a hole. That's here, a whole but... bunch of that's what she said. Well, no, no, I'm about to dig myself a hole here because I would either have to. Whichever one of you would be available, I'd have to choose between either you or uh, Mrs. Blue Liner. Um, and I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 uh, yeah, I'm, I'm dreading that choice. Should I ever be faced with that? Um, but uh, yeah, you had you had your tutoring, and uh, she had to work, so uh, mm -hmm. I, I rode solo on that one. And, and good thing I did because I, it, it freed me up to do my scouting. Uh, with your binoculars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those right. two. But okay. uh, so, but yeah, I, it was it's was a pretty good experience, pretty good game. I enjoyed the whole thing. And uh, just one thing about the experience, though, can we do without the damn fan cam? That can we just do without <laughs> that? I, I mean, come on. Was it we the kiss that. cam that got on you, and you're like, oh, no, 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 no. They don't have a kiss cam, thank God. But the fan cam, can we just do without that crap? You know, the kids like to dance. Come I, on, don't. It wasn't even kids. It, uh, I don't, I'm not gonna get to it. Okay. okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, it's a good time to wrap it up. A good first preseason game. Uh, mentioned earlier, looking to get Anna out there at uh, the former Kettler uh, facility and uh, spying on a few practices. But uh, looking forward to uh, training, rest of training camp, and uh, a great opening season here. And and yeah, this is uh, th this is a good sign, I think. Uh, speaking of signs, so uh, unless Anna, you have anything else you want to throw out there? I don't. Okay, fair enough. All right. So for the mermaid, Anna Knox, this is the Blue Liner on Point signing off. And I just want to end the show by reminding everybody that you should always do the right thing. Okay. Hallelujah, and let's go Caps. Go Caps. This has been another episode of the Power Play Point Podcast. All episodes are available from Apple Podcasts, the Podbean app, blueliner77.podbean.com, and now available from Stitcher. Music by Joe McAllister, voiceover by Jeffrey Conkle.